Michael. I wanted to apologize to you for my birthday party blues. Uh, you just caught me at a bad time. And I also wanted to thank you again for your necklace and your advice. I think you were right. I'm going to divorce myself from whatever feelings that I have about Mason, and I'm going to do my duty as district attorney. I want every male doctor who leaves this hospital identified. If he's got a woman with him, I want him tailed, but not approached. You got that? Talk to me. They're all empty. Every exam room. No sign of Zach or Celeste. Don't worry about it. We got the perimeter covered. He's not going to get out of here with her. We were stupid to think that this was going to work out. I never should have Michael, left. Michael, for all we know, it already has worked. We're not going to storm this place just yet. Besides, if Celeste is half as tough as she talks, she can take care of herself. This reminds me of a science fiction movie. <laughs> Does it have to be so dark in here? Oh, come on. A little darkness? Now, you don't seem like the jittery type. Well, I'm usually not. I mean, I'm the kind of person I say what's on my mind, you know, and never beat around the bush. Well, why don't you tell me what's on your mind right now? I wish these tests were over. Well, if you just relax, these tests will be over in no time. Well, we got the results back from the test. No uh, cysts or tumors, and you're not pregnant. As a matter of fact, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with you at all. How do you explain the cramping, then? Well, it's probably just um, normal hormonal variation. It's nothing to be alarmed about. So I guess I've wasted your time, then. No, if you are concerned about something, it's always good to check. As a matter of fact, um, who referred you to me? Uh, Scott Clark. I work over at the clinic. Well, I'll have to remember to thank you. So will I. Uh, probably the best thing to do is for you to make an appointment for uh, next week, just to uh, make sure. You mean I'm going to have to wait that long to see you again? What do you have in mind? Well, dinner tonight. I take back what I said before. You are a very direct woman. Does that scare you? Only as much as the darkness scares you. I just don't like to let opportunities pass me by, that's all. And I happen to find you very attractive. So what do you say? My place tonight? I make it a policy never to date my patients. It's not a problem. Next time I come here, I'll just see a different gynecologist. Can I borrow your pen? You just... Bring the wine and those beautiful eyes, and I'll supply the rest. Oh, it's, it certainly sounds like it's going to be a very interesting evening. Let's hope so. Tonight, let me take you to the stars. Funny. Questo che l'or è uguale che tu occhi tan bellissimo. Oh, Bunny, you shouldn't have. Tonight, we have reservations at the most exciting most exotic restaurant in town. When I show up there tonight, with you by my side wearing that dress, I will prove to everyone... Wait a minute, Bunny. Who's going to be wearing the dress? You are. I'll be in silk. My silk suit, Italian loafers. Wait a minute. I, it all sounds very romantic, Bunny. That is only just the beginning, my darling. After dinner, we are going to have cappuccino. An amaretto at a tiny outdoor cafe found by the beach, where the gentle sounds of the ocean will make your heart swoon. Tonight, Gina, we are going to be romantic, just for the sake of romance. 
Fratella. Questa notte voglio che la luna nos fa sentire come due ragazzi morati per la prima volta. Conti il cuore mio. Bunny, 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 I, I, I can't. Gina, don't deny your feelings. There's nothing to hide from anymore. Sonny's gone. Grazie a Dio. He's out of your life. You deserve better. And I will give you what you deserve. Ophelia. Bunny. You just don't get it, do you? It's that Capwell again, isn't it? Not on that I mean. But what is it you see in this guy that makes you so blind? First cheap women, now cheap cigars. What are you doing here, Mason? Waiting for you. You know, it must be wonderful to have someone you can run to whenever you have a problem or need advice or just maybe want a little company. I have one question, though. Does Michael ever come running to you? My friendship with Michael is none of your business, nor is anything else in my personal life. Is that clear? Only because you want it that way. Actually, I was forced into the decision, and I really don't feel like getting into a discussion about that right now. Well, do you feel like getting into a discussion about um, why you're considering turning the case over to somebody else? Is it because you think you can't win it? <laughs> Actually, I thought it was the other way around. Otherwise, you wouldn't have tried to steal the evidence from me. Well, then maybe there's a personal reason. Like, maybe you still care about me. Maybe even miss me a little. Don't flatter yourself. The Mason I miss is gone. He's turned into a very, very ugly person. Someone that I don't want to know about anymore. Then maybe you'll be needing a replacement. You just keep sinking lower and lower and lower. You know what? I pity you now, Mason. Why are you doing this? Maybe I miss having somebody running after me the way you do after Michael. Maybe Michael listens to me. He hears what I have to say. You're so selfish, you don't hear anybody but yourself. Then maybe I need divinity lessons. Why are you so bitter all of a sudden, Mason? Don't you realize that you are responsible for all of your actions during all of this? Not me, not Gina, and certainly not Michael. Did you notice how you lumped us all together? Me, you, Gina, Michael. What are you implying? Only what I've been saying all along. It's nice to have somebody you can trust. Finding comfort is so important when you're alone. I'm sure Michael will be alone any minute. I assume you're gonna wait for him. Give him my best, huh? Bye, Julie. He was testing me right down the line. I mean, every question, every remark, there was something underneath it. Did you get a look at his ankle? Not yet. Not yet? What does that mean? It means I made a date with him. That is out of the question. Look, there's no way for me to get a glimpse of that scar on his ankle unless I get him into some kind of intimate situation. Now, we all know my specialty is intimate situations. He is a dangerous man. You being alone with him away from here is an unacceptable risk. You can be right in the next room. If I play this thing right, yeah. I'm not even going to have to get him into the bedroom. Uh, he, he will know that we're there in two minutes. Are you kidding me? This guy's on top of everything. All right, all right. Then we find someplace else. Oh, please. There's a tenement building across the street. That's good visibility. What? Are you... You think this is a good or, idea? I don't know. Do you have a better bet? I don't want to put Celeste in danger any more than you but do. I know the risks! Me. I know the risks, and I'm willing to take them. Please. You need me. I am the only one who can help you out with this. Please let me help. I wish to God I were in a position to turn down that kind of help. I really do. You're dead sure you want to do this. Hey, man, I handled it this afternoon. I can handle it tonight. Well, I think you're some kind of crazy. But all right. 
Except, I'm gonna check that stake out first. And if I think there's any chance we can't get to you from there in a one second flat, this stunt is off. Understood? Understood. What time's the date? Seven o'clock tonight. We've got time to set things up. We start now, I suppose. I gotta go shopping. Shopping? Hey, man, I gotta, I gotta look good for the guy, you know? You burned all my effective wardrobe, don't you remember? All right, all right. Just don't overdo it. Me overdo it? Come on. Never. Celeste. Yeah. Thank you. All right. What do we set up first? We, uh, did you hear what I said? We're going to check the tenement before we set up anything. If I think there's a chance we can't get to that woman immediately, this game is off. All right. Bonnie, this has nothing to do with love or romance or anything like that. It's about my future. Whatever you want, whatever you need, I can give to you. Don't you understand? You don't understand, Bunny. Cece's been trying to ruin my life for as long as I can remember. I know, I know. No, you don't. You don't understand. Let me tell you. I finally have the opportunity to pay Cece back for every lousy thing he's ever done to me and to anybody I ever loved and... I get a chance to make a lot of money to boot. Now, the money is for Brandon. The revenge is for me. Right. But do it by yourself, or I'll help you. What do you need that hayseed Sonny for? Because Sonny has the only thing that can bring Cece down. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. I thought what he needed were those memos from that, that Dame Wainwright. Yeah, well, I don't think she's got the memos anymore. I think Sonny managed to get his hands on them, and he's gonna go ahead with his plan on his own. He's been living it up all over town. So what are you gonna do about it? I don't know. Try to get back on Sonny's good side. Oh, yeah? And what if he won't let you? Suppose he's already put the plan in motion. What are you going to do then? Just march right up to C.C. Capitol and say, excuse me, but there's been a mistake. I'm the one who's supposed to be blackmailing you, not your son. He hasn't told C.C. yet. I would know. The day that C.C. finds out his own son is blackmailing him, we'll all know because the earth will move, believe me. I can't tell you how this breaks my heart to see you doing this to yourself could all be so easy if you just let me out. Got a media. Bunny, yeah. Bunny, will you please stop with the Italian? I know you have my best interests in mind, but you don't know me. Once I make up my mind, that's it. There is no changing it. I appreciate your friendship. And I enjoy your support very, very much. But with or without it, I've got to go through with this. I'm sorry. So am I. I guess you won't be needing this. I hate to see it go to waste. Do you have any idea of the severity of what is going on? Do you know the week could be ruined? I'm well aware of the stakes in this lawsuit. Well, you sure don't show it. You don't even show up at the office. From what I understand, you're acting the part of a playboy. That's my business. No, it is my business when your cavorting gets in the way of my lawsuit. I'm not going to lose this case because you're fooling around on a taking care of business. Put down the coin. You seem to forget that I'm the one taking all the risks here. I don't appreciate your hostility when things don't work out. Things would work out a lot more regularly if you put your bloody mind to it. You know, I'm startled by the faith you have in me. You make it very difficult, Mason. Very difficult. I really... I mean, I give you a simple assignment. Steal the memos. What do you do? You get caught. Putting up a red flag, we have no chance to steal them again. To make things even worse, Gina gets involved in this. Now, this doesn't exactly instill confidence in a man, now does it? <coughs> I told you, Gina is obviously working on her own. Doesn't seem so obvious to me. In fact, I'm saying something I'm beginning to wonder about. <coughs> uh, look. Mason, I don't want to jump down your throat for everything you do. I just, I want to get this lawsuit out of my mind. A lot of things are happening in my life right now. My relationship with Sophia is more strained than ever, and I was hoping through all this chaos, something I could forget about would benefit me. We well, can start forgetting. Everything's under control. No, things don't get under control unless you get back in Julie's good graces, and that's an impossible feat. Unless one had something to hang over her head. Tell me, I'm intrigued. Oh, I will when the time comes. 
In the meantime, do like I said. Relax. Everything's under control. Plotting new strategies? What a touching family scene. Don't you have an appointment with a wrestling instructor or something, Augusta? Oh, no, I canceled it so I could keep an eye on you. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but all's quiet on the Western Front. Oh, they say it's always quiet as before the storm. And I think you're making a tempest in a teapot. Well, I'm all out of cliché, so I guess I'll be running along. I'm warning you, Mason, don't try anything foolish. Not to worry, Augusta. I sincerely doubt I'll ever do anything foolish again. <laughs> What do you think? Where's the rest of it? Well, the skirt's in the other box. I'm interested in the blouse. Let's be realistic here. I mean, what exactly is it I'm trying to do? Keep that in mind? Uh, Celeste, would you mind putting it on? I'm worried there won't be a place to conceal the wire. Wire? What? We would like to wire you. If we can, instead of the room, so what happened at the hospital doesn't happen again this time. The problem is he could find it, especially if things were to get too intimate. Well, you don't have to worry about that. I mean, I can handle that. I learned that a long time ago. First thing you do is get the man undressed in case you have to make a speedy exit. It's no problem. Yeah, well, in any case, uh, you better show us what you got. I, I mean, uh, what you bought. <laughs> Okay. I'll try it on for you guys. Give me Well, she seems to be in good spirits. Don't let her fool you. I know her. She's just as nervous as we are, if not more so. Well, if she starts having second thoughts, I hope she'll tell us about him, because I got a feeling Zack around fear is a lot like a shark around blood. But I think she can handle it. She's trying to prove something, and it's very important to her, and she's not going to let herself down. Carlos, can I ask a big favor? Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Um, actually, I'm, uh, I'm sort of knee-deep in undercover work. Is it anything that I should know about? Uh, I think we need to keep it under wraps for now, Julie. Okay, understood. Fine. What's up? They are doing some construction work outside my window, and I can't get any work done. I was wondering if I could use your office. Um, sure. I mean, I don't know if you'll be able to get any more done here, but you're welcome to try. We'll be out of your way as soon as we finish up. We're, um, kind of waiting for an associate to meet. So, what do you think? Uh, which one of us would you like to, to answer? Uh, what about the, uh, the... Oh, that's right, the buttons. Good thinking. Is that better? Like that? Like that? I left some papers in my office and I, I forgot all about it. I'll, I'll be right back. You can under wraps, huh? Well, um... I'll get the wire. draft in here or something? That was sort of what I was thinking. I would think the approaching court date would have your back against the wall. Why should I be afraid of the court date? I have nothing to worry about. Don't be too sure of your son. What is that supposed to mean? Well, I'll just say two words and leave it at that. Gina Timmons. What about her? I said my two words. Don't play games with me, please. I'm not playing games with you, Cece. I thought you had that figured out by now. And please take your arm off my hand before I have to call a policeman. Doesn't it seem strange to you that Gina Timmons shows up next to Mason at the most inopportune times Why you'd almost think that they were working together? If you're trying to turn my son against me, you can save your breath. Well, that's very fatherly of you. But I don't think it will hold up as defense in a court. 
You know, I don't really care about you or Mason or any of the Cathwells, but I do care about my sister, and for some strange reason, she has a misguided loyalty towards Mason because he's the father of her child. But Mason is only loyal to himself. I just want everybody involved to be clear on that. You're despicable. Oh, thank you. You mean you never thought about it? Mason and Gina were arrested together. They're in a collusion. It's obvious. You're deluded, too. You think I'm going to believe you over my own son? It doesn't matter whether you believe me or not. The situation speaks for itself. Well, I'd like to say it's been wonderful chatting with you, but it hasn't. Well, then you're welcome to leave. Oh, what would we have, Cece, if we didn't hate each other? I know what I have. My life would be much more pleasant if you didn't <laughs> exist. Charming to the last. Instead of my fares, I guess I'm... This is all too serious for a bitter woman who has nothing better to do than to try to ruin other people's lives. You understand me? Just like I said, charming to the last. I won't drink a drop tomorrow. You let me drown my sorrow. Tomorrow I'll be over her much better than I'll keep. tonight. I can only see me now. Drinking beer and whiskey sours, and I can wash down her memory. And in the morning I'll feel all right. Hello, Sonny. It it's Gina. Can we talk? Yeah, anywhere from, uh, here to, uh, right about here, and we'll be able to see you. You step out of this area, and we're going to be depending on the audio only. I don't mean to cramp your style, but I think you ought to be aware of that. Well, if things go as planned, this should be the only area that I'll need anyway, so it'll be fine. Celeste, don't go any further than you feel comfortable. You don't see the scar, you don't see it. Listen, I understand the importance of not pushing Zach, so I won't. All right, well, hopefully you won't be able to see us from over here. Look, again, I just want you to know that I'm very appreciative of you going out on a limb like this. I'm really glad I can help. It means a lot. Yeah. Well, I guess I better get my butt across the street. You, uh, say a few words to Michael, just... Just to make sure the bugs work and talk to him, okay? Just talk? Okay. Yeah, yeah, just talk, and I'll give you a sign from the window up there. Okay. Good luck. Thanks. she'd like to hear you put it that way. Why not? You sound like her brother. I get the feeling she sees you in quite a different light. Really? As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if she's just doing this to impress you. No, she's, she's doing this for herself. Not me.
And now back to the Emmy Award winning Santa Barbara. You busy? Yes. You know, I can't help thinking how Samantha must be reacting to all of this. All of what? A mother waging a war against her father, both personally and professionally, even going so far as to having him thrown in jail. Mason's out of jail because now. Because I paid the bail. If it was up to you, he'd still be in jail. Do you think a child can understand that? You tell me how a child is going to understand that her father is a common thief, a corrupt puppet that his father uses to do his dirty work. Didn't come here for a fight, Julia. I know why you came here, Cece. You're trying to get me to back down from this case. I even know your technique. You'll appeal to my vulnerability, then you'll start threatening me, and then your real colors will come out. Do you have any idea at all what my family is going through right now? Yes, I do. I think I think it's a horrible tragedy. But you're going to pressure it anyway to get back in Mason. Listen to me clearly. There is nothing personal about my prosecution, Cece, other than the deep belief that the tragedy that the families of these oil rig workers have suffered is just as important as any tragedy that your family is suffering or any tragedy that any family is suffering. Do you understand? It was not my fault. Am I supposed to pay millions of dollars for an accident I had no control over? I feel awful mm. about what happened. Am I supposed to be responsible for every terrible thing that happens in the world, Julia? This conversation is pointless. In court or out of court, you are going to pay those families what they have lost. You know what's wrong about you? I came here thinking I could uh, appeal to your sense of reason, your sense of compassion. Mason's made you so angry, you blocked that all out. You're just doing this to get back at him. I'm going to make the jury see that. You're just a bitter, scorned woman attacking a man in the middle of a personal tragedy just for revenge. Oh, God. You would use your own granddaughter as a weapon. No, it is not a weapon. It is not a weapon. My family is being attacked right now. And by God, I'm going to protect them. Romance. Texas style. This is not romance. This is desperation. Bonnie, you scared me. I scared you? You're scaring me, Gina. Look at this. This is not you. How far do you have to go before you realize, I mean, with all these cowboy hats and kerosene lamps and, and, and uh, cactus plants, before you realize that you're not going to find happiness? Look, Bonnie, I don't want to talk about it, okay? Bonnie's going to be here any minute. Yeah, well, I'm going to be right upstairs. And if he starts to treat you the way he treated you yesterday, when he walked out on you, I'm going to be down here and I'm going to step in. I don't care if you hate me, Gina. I will not let him do that again. That is him. Now go. Great. Hi there, cowboy. I don't have much time, Gina, so you're going to have to say whatever it is you have to say. What the hell is going on here? Do you like it? What is all this? Well, I've got some spare ribs cooking on barbecue and back. Got some bourbon, some beer, and some ranch water, of course. You must think I'm dumber than a brick. No. I'm the only dumb hayseed in this room. I realized that after you left. I felt terrible. I felt just awful, Sonny. Yeah, terrible because I was going to be rich and you weren't, right? No, that has nothing to do with it. That's not true. I felt terrible because I realized how much I needed you. How much I need your strength. Honey, please. Take me in your arms and make mad, passionate love to me by the light of the kerosene lamps. <laughs> Come on. I will lick barbecue sauce off your fingers. I want you to make love to me. Right here. Right under the cactus plant. I heard that. In the morning, I can mm. throw away the You don't suppose the bastard be too afraid to show up? I don't know how you do it. Weaker man would have fallen apart a long time before now. 
Well, I'm plenty weak, you know. I just figure if I fall apart now, I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him. And if I kill him, I'll never see my baby again. Fine line to walk. Every time I feel like I'm falling, I just remember the look on Eden's face. I know if I lose it now, that look is never gonna go away. That's him. All right, Belle. Walk right in. It's almost 8 o'clock, Julia. Only bartenders work this late. I'm getting things together for the trial. I was the one who wanted an early court date, so I have to prepare for it. Can I make a comment on that? No. Well, I have a feeling that any woman who works all hours of the night is a woman who is afraid to go home. Nothing gets by you, does it? Ah, fear not. I have a suggestion. What? Sell your house. What? You have two very difficult memories to get past. One with Father Michaels and with Mason. You've got to divorce yourself from the memories before you can divorce yourself from the feelings. Selling my house isn't going to solve my problems. Well, it's a start. Augusta, you are the perfect ending to a perfectly awful day. <laughs> Thank you, I think. Well, look, I just want the best solution for you. I want you to be happy. I know, and I love you for that. Well. Aren't you going to tell me what was so terrible about your day? Everybody seemed to come by and want to give me a little piece of advice. CZ came by and in no uncertain terms told me that he'd like me to retract the lawsuit of Capital Enterprises. Mason came back and I have no idea what the hell kind of advice he was giving me. He was acting very strange for a change. Please don't tell me that he's making you fall in love with him again. That was just something different. He acted more jealous and more bitter than I have ever seen him. He's playing some kind of game with me. Well, he's just bluffing. He has no defense, you know that. This is my advice, and it's always my advice. Never, ever trust a Capwell. You know, sometimes I think we ought to do this for real. Well, if that wasn't for real, I don't know what is. No, I mean, make love outdoors under a real southwestern sky with the doggies lowing in the distance and an open fire the way the cowboys did. Sonny, there aren't any real cowboys in Santa Barbara, at least not anymore. Yeah, well, when I get my money, I'm going to go on a search and find them out. Don't you mean we? Well, why should I take you back, Gina? Why should I include you in the plan again? Because, Sonny, we belong together. Yeah, well, what if I decided to give up the plan? Would you still want me then? Why would you do that? Just answer my question. Well, of course I'd still want you. I mean, it's you. It's, it's not the plan. <laughs> I have to say, I admire your determination, Gina. Sonny, I don't know what you're talking about. You confuse me. Maybe we ought to get hitched up. You mean, get married? I can't think of a better way for you to prove your devotion, can you? Well, I mean, if you really wanted to, I guess. <laughs> That's all right, darling. Pick your jaw up off the floor. I just wanted to see how far you were willing to go. You know, girl, we really are a lot alike. I guess that means we ought to be working together. So? Does that mean you forgive me? Yeah, I guess it does. So we're business partners again? Yeah, with a few conditions. What conditions? Now, don't you worry yourself, Pumpkin. They ain't any worse than the things you've made me agree to. Maybe Mario was right. I don't think big enough. Petticini. Michelangelo Ferrari. Tu parla italiano come un dios. Macaroni. Pepperoni. La pulicella. I have taken the city, Mark Antony. I am Octavius, the new Caesar, and you will bow to me. Wait a minute, what the hell is he doing in there? Why? 
I need my wine. Eunuch! Eunuch, bring my wine! Let it flow. Hear your mightiness. Enough, eunuch. That's not wine. <laughs> that's poison. <laughs> no, that's not right either. Whose fantasy is this anyway? be so easy. eyes or date gynecologist both <laughs> to be honest with you uh, you're the first one probably the last considering how uh, boring I've been tonight no no I've had a wonderful time really so far well it just seemed like the uh, conversation wasn't exactly what you expected I never expect anything <laughs> it keeps life interesting well, what do you find interesting about me If I tell you that, we could be here all night. Well, that sounds very interesting. Maybe I should get the blinds. I was wondering when you were going to do that. And there's a visual. Oh, damn it. see why we need conditions if we trust each other. Those conditions are what keep the world in line, sweet chicks. Now, we both agree that I am the only man in your life right now. Is that right? Yes. Good. So from now on, I don't want you to ever mention that Fleabag Keith's name again, you hear? Oh, Sonny, what is that supposed to accomplish? It's going to make me happy. That's what it'll accomplish. Now, second, you said that you were a dumb hayseed for letting me walk out on you, right? Well, that makes... Me smart for walking out, and you dumb for letting me, right? Well, I suppose in the far-ranging cosmic scheme of things, that could be one bizarre interpretation. Yeah, well, I want it to be your interpretation. I want to hear you say it at least once a day. You want to hear me say that you are smarter than I am every day? <laughs> at least once a day. Well, you can forget that, Sonny. Fine, then no, I'm out of here. All right. All right. Every day I'll tell you that you're smarter than me. Say it like you mean it. Oh, Sonny, you are so much smarter than me. Happy? <laughs> Very. Let's seal it with a kiss. Mm. Where are the memos? They're with Julia. You mean to tell me that you don't have them? Yeah, where'd you get that idea? You've been parading all over town like Citizen Kane. I thought it was me you were after, not some silly old memos. You know, you have a lot of nerve. Mm, now simmer down. Just because I don't have them right now doesn't mean I'm not going to have them. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Trust me, Pumpkin. I got a plan to end all others. This time, it's as good as in the bag. Mmm, great hound. Huh? 
very gentle. Well, it comes from handling babies. <laughs> <laughs> Baby? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, that's enough for me. It's your turn now. Would you? <clears throat> well, I, I had better warn you, I am uh, ticklish. Mm hmm? You won't be under my care. I want you to lie back and relax. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. What's going on? They're not saying anything. Nothing's going on. If it were, we'd hear something. Maybe he found the boat. No, no. She would have screamed. Maybe he's keeping her from screaming. Damn it, we gotta do something. <laughs> 